Thank you for joining us this evening. We're getting ready for the 2023 high school football season here on East Main Sports uh, Media. We're just a few days from getting everything going. Um, my name is Mark Callen, East Main Sports Media. You'll you'll hear me on a lot of broadcasts this year. Um, you know, on the on the website, check out our YouTube page. Um, got a couple games this weekend: Foxcroft, John Babs, and Sauky Valley in Mount View. Um, I will not be on the broadcast. I'll be on the video and producing, but uh, we have a great team of uh, Zach and Gabe on uh, Friday night and Zach and Chris on uh, Saturday afternoon um, doing those games for you. So uh, hopefully you can tune in. Um, now I'm going to introduce who else we have with us. Uh, first, we're going to start with um, Andrew Hart. He's the, he runs the uh, great site, Maine High School Football. You can probably see all the stuff uh, floating around Facebook and, and everywhere. Um, you know, he's He's my number one go-to for uh, high school football. You know, that site um, it helps um, us on our broadcast a lot. And uh, um, Andrew, just tell us a little bit about your site and uh, what you got going this year. Evening, uh, Mark. Pleasure to be here. Um, as he said, uh, Andrew Hart with Maine High School Football. My goal here is to bring the world of Maine uh, football out or the uh, bring our state of football out to the rest of the world and then to bring the rest of the world to our little slice of heaven here in Maine. I like to cover stats, scores, standings, information, some little tidbits, some little awards, and just kind of giving uh, everybody a greater insight into the ins and outs of football here in Maine. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we also got Bob Beatham with us here tonight. Um, you'll hear him um, on hopefully some of our broadcasts. He doesn't get as much chance during football as he's busy with PA and other stuff, but maybe we can get him on a broadcast or two. And, and you'll hear him on the PA, um, you know, for, um, you know, John Babs and Bangor games, right, Bob? Absolutely. Got the first game uh, Friday night. Actually, had the preseason game this past Friday with Scarborough. Uh, Andrew mentioned that you know, his website's followed all over the world. And speaking of that, I'd like to give a good shout out tonight to my good friend, Gray, who is watching from Mississippi. So we are indeed all over the country and all over the world. But yeah, I'll be doing the uh, public address for Bangor High School and John Babst. And also we'll have the eight man state championship games at Cameron Stadium on Veterans Day. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Great to have you guys with us. Uh, you you guys are full of knowledge when it comes to high school football. And you, you also, you can see um, um, these two are two of the, the fellows that are part of a pick em contest every every week. Uh, we'll start that this week. Those are pro those will be posted um, either Wednesday night or, or Thursday. Um, so look for those. Uh, Bob's, uh, Bob's like the uh, dynasty there. He didn't win last year, but he, he usually does uh, come up near the top. Run for title number seven this year, but hey, week one is hard. I mean, my biggest goal week one is that I don't bury myself too deep in the standings and dig myself too big of a hole. But uh, so many, you know, unknowns and a lot of things uh, week one that are hard to hard to figure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, let's guys, let's start first with the uh, let's start right at class A. We'll go right in order and um, start with uh, class A. Um, first, um, Andrew. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a you know the top four makes a playoffs in each the north and south. How do you think um, it's really an unbalanced schedule? Um, they don't really play the same teams. Do you think that's going to be a factor this year? It's definitely going to be interesting because I think you're going to see a little bit of last year where some of your top teams have kind of started engaging in other top teams, and obviously. Crabtree rankings are all about how you do and all about how your how strong of opponents you have on your schedule. So the fact that some of them are clearly, you know, going for the challenge this year, I think it's going to absolutely help them out. And it's going to be unique. Uh, they're the only of all uh, all 12 um, or six classes, 12 regions across the state. They are the only ones that have a significant number in this regard that are not making the playoffs. Everywhere else, it's basically everybody in. When, you know, Class A, because they're going nine weeks, they do, uh, they can't admit everybody. So it's going to be a unique race. Um, you know, a lot of parity this year. Hi, it's going to be, especially Class A, it's going to be tough to kind of forecast how things are going to be starting out. You may not see a separation truly from the pack until you get to that midway point of the season. Well, yep. uh, how do you, uh, you know, we mentioned you do a lot of Bangor games. They had a young team last year, definitely a rebuilding year. Um, what do you expect from them this year? Well, they're, they're much improved. I uh, saw them Friday night against Scarborough. 
137 to nothing with their first string group against first string the first half is 28 nothing at the half. Uh, Bengal forced four turnovers in the first half. Um, they got two real good sophomore linebackers in Zach Coda and uh, Kyle Johnson. Johnson is also going to be their key um, running back as well. He broke off a 44-yard run for a touchdown in the first half of that game. Uh, they're still probably a year away, but they were one and eight last year. I could see them, you know, possibly you know winning record this year uh, with their schedule. Uh, they don't have Thornton Academy on the schedule this year. They don't have Bonnie Eagle. They do finish with a very good Oxford Hills team, who I think, and we'll get to predictions later, who I think might be the favorite again, you know, despite, you know, their graduation losses. Uh, but that's going to be a very interesting opening night game with Lawrence. And, you know, Bangor is, Bangor is much improved. I, I think that's uh, going to be a real good game Friday night. Um, Andrew, in the, in the South region, you know, we always talk about Thornton and Bonnie Eagle. Well, well deserved. Do um, you, you see anybody putting up a big challenge there this year in the South? The talk throughout the off season's been about one: the move of Portland from Class B up to Class A. They were just off of their, um, you know relatively close loss to Skowhegan in the Class B state championship. And Portland made the move up. They happened to get the um, Sean Green, who was the head coach over at Cape Elizabeth. Um, he's He did a phenomenal job with the Capers, not just, you know, getting them back up to an immense respectability, but, you know, two years ago, his team was one of the powerhouse offenses in the state. And he's bringing over a significant, you know, chunk of his uh, assistant coaching staff with him to Portland. And there's certainly been a lot of buzz, um, not just around the region here, but also within the state of Portland. Uh, I've had a chance to check in with a couple of the assistant coaches, and they've said that with Sean coming in, there was a great buy-in, not just from the kids, but also the community. And I think expectations certainly got raised quite a bit um, when he was hired in. And with their opening game against uh, Thornton Academy, Thornton Academy for a long time has been that measuring stick of class A. So it's a chance for Portland to immediately jump into the deep end and kind of showcase where they're at. Um, let's kind of go, um, let's do predictions by, by class. Like we'll do it as we talk about each class. So we'll kind of get to that here in a second. Um, uh, Bob, you talked about Oxford Hills. Um, now, as you said, we'll get to predictions in a minute. Do you see anybody challenge them them in the north? Uh, Andrew mentioned Portland. They're, they're actually in the north. Um, you know, so, um, you know, kind of Oxford Hills and Portland might be the top of the Class A north. Oxford Hills, Portland, I think you also have to maybe throw Wyndham in there as well. Uh, they were a very strong Class B program the last couple of years. Got to a state final, and that's, you know, consistently year in and year out a, a strong program. So I would, I would think those three and then – uh, I think Lewiston's very athletic. They're probably maybe a little bit better. Edward Little's improved, I believe. And then, you know, certainly Bangor, I think, will make a, a lot of strides as well. So, uh, but I, I think Oxford Hill's probably the favorite. And then, uh, again, Portland. And then also, uh, I think Wyndham you put in the mix as well. All right. Well, Andrew, let's um, let's get to the picks. Uh, what's your pick for uh, first uh, Class A South? I see coming out of the South, um, Thornton Academy has got to be on everybody's number one. You can't, you can't dispute them. Um, you know, they don't rebuild, they reload. I've also heard a lot of good things about Bonnie Eagle coming into this, um, coming into the season. So my pick, and I'm going to, I'm going to probably upset one side or the other, but I'm going Bonnie Eagle making it out of the South. And what about the North? The North, uh, I am going to go on a limb here, and I'm going to say I think Portland surprises people. I think their schedule is going to help them, and I see Portland appearing as the North representative. On their home field? On their home field, yep, just like last year. <laughs> um, okay, all right, who you got uh, Port, Port, um, in the, to win that state game? I Kevin Cooper's won seven. He's not lost a state championship. Uh, Portland's got a, a heck of a job to rebuild. I think they're going to do a good one, but I think that uh, Kevin gets, he gets one ring for the uh, the eighth finger. There you go. Uh, Bob, uh, same to you. Uh, Class A South? 
I'm going to go rematch the last year's state championship game. I got Thornton Academy out in the south and then Oxford Hills in the north. And I think Thornton Academy turns the tables this year and gets another state title for Coach Kevin Giesel. I'm going to go with uh, Bonnie Eagle and Oxford Hills and go with uh, Oxford Hills uh, winning that one. So that's uh, that's Class A. Um, any more thoughts on Class A, guys? No, nothing. All right, well, we can move to uh, Class B uh, here. Um, you know, start, Lawrence, uh, Bob, you get to see them uh, right off the bat Friday night. And, uh, you know, kind of a, a good good challenge for both Bangor and Lawrence, really, on Friday night, huh? Yeah, I think so. And again, it's a real interesting matchup, too. It's kind of a long-time robbery in the 2000s. If you remember back the 2000s, early, you know, 2010s, it seems like they were playing or contending – back when they had three classes in the Pine Tree Conference, and that was a tremendous robbery. Now it gets renewed um, Friday night. You know, Bangor's, it was down last year, you know, had that real good year two years ago, and then had a stretch where they really, really struggled. Uh, you know, Lawrence has been consistently good. Uh, but, I, you know, I think Lawrence and B North might be might be the team to beat, though. I, they've got a good, from what I understand, they've got a good, you know, a little bit inexperienced line. Uh, solid quarterback. Uh, they lost a real good back last year to Parker Higgins. It's uh, going to be tough to replace, but um, yeah, I think I think Lawrence is going to be real, real solid in B North. Um, Andrew, you kind of same thing we talked about in A. Uh, Gardner and Lawrence played three non-regional games. That could be a benefit, especially if if those teams they play are good, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, it's kind of it's the trick of um, it's the trick of Crabtree. If you can't, unlike heel points, which only gives you points if you beat the better teams, Crabtree does factor in, you know, the strength of schedule overall, even if you may lose to them. So punching up a class, punching up to a higher weight to a higher opponent, I think it's a smart thing, provided they can pick up that win against them. Right. And, um, you know, so and we talked about, you know, class A, kind of a lower percentage make the playoffs than other classes. Six out of seven make the playoffs here in North North and South. Um, so, you know, kind of just battling for, for kind of positioning. But in the South, Andrew, kind of who do you see as um, kind of the top top two or three team? There's some good stories coming out of the uh, the South here. Uh, Marshwood, you've got Alex Rotsko, who's nine wins away from picking up 100 in Maine. Just, you know, it, it's shocking if you think about it. This is his... 11th year, 11th uh, year coming in and to pick up 11 wins is, or almost a hundred wins is just unheard of. You know, you don't see that sort of thing. And that's a testament to what he's put together. Another one I'm going to mention is Kennebunk. Gone is Coach Rafferty. Uh, he takes a significant chunk of the state's most experienced, longest tenured coach. And he's gone in his place is Keith Noel. Um, for those who are not aware, this is actually Keith's second year coaching. He was brought in over in Sanford back in 2014. Uh, Mike Fallon had asked for a year to step away. They had brought Keith over to, to take over for a year for coaching, and Mike came back the next year. He's been there since. Um, I think Keith is going to be able to continue that culture going on there. Um, the other program that I am kind of intrigued about coming out of the South is um, in addition to Marshwood, in addition to Kennebunk is I'm kind of curious to see if, is this the year that South Portland can, can make that move? They were in the regional finals for the first time in, oh, close to 30 years. My, my memory is a little bit off, but I think you're probably close to that. I think Aaron Filio has, you know, he's been able to turn around some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the fortunes in, uh, with the Red Riots and, if I had to pick, those are going to probably be my three front runners. It's going to be an open field. Um, you know, I think with the open schedule, it's going to make it nice and interesting uh, down the stretch as they're kind of, you know, racing neck and neck against each other. Bob, um, is there a surprise team you can see maybe in Class B North? Well, that's good. Um, I know Scout Heaky got decimated. I'm hearing a lot of good things about Falmouth. Uh, Falmouth might be a team. Class B North that might make a run. Uh, what class uh, didn't South Portland get moved up to Class A this year? Yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah I'm sorry about that. I'm still oh, getting no, no. used to it. <laughs> I know I, it's hard to keep. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of changes this year. So, um, 
But what uh, uh, think, uh, Andrew? I know they made a lot of strides last year. Can maybe they make another step forward this year? Yeah, one can only hope. One can only hope. They've uh, they've been fighting, battling for a long time. Um, well, let's go to let's go still to still in class B, uh, correct? Massapequa's Massapequa's six state in B, right? Yep, they are B. B. Um, okay. So we got Benefit Darren, Benefit Darren Gore, and Kenny Bunk, Marshwood, Massapequa, and Westbrook in B South. Mm -hmm. um, Bob, how about we start with you? Uh, uh, B South, uh, B South, the B winners, B South and B North in the state championship. Oh, that's good. Call. I'm, I'm going with Lawrence in the North and the South. I'm going to say Marshwood bounces back. They had an uncharacteristic down year last year, but I think Marshwood comes out of the South. And I'm going to go with the Lawrence Bulldogs. There you go. Uh, Andrew, same same deal. B North can be so tough to pick sometimes because it seems like your top team by the end of the regular season often is not that one that's been going to state. You know, look at I look at last year, Coney's the team that finished top overall. They got tripped up against uh, Falmouth. Falmouth lost to Skowhegan, and well, we all know what happened with the Riverhawks. So um, I'm going to go with Coney. I'm going to give them the, the benefit of the doubt there. I think I think they're finally due after last year. And then in the South, I'm going to have to go again with, I'm going to have to go with Marshwood, same as Bob. I think Marshwood down year last year, but it happens. And I, I've heard a couple things. They're looking at a pretty strong team coming out of the gate. And I think, um, I think Marshwood takes it. I think Alex adds yet another title to his resume. I'm not, I can't remember. Where's the B State game being played? Portland? It is. Okay. All right. That's good because it's going to be found within Marshwood and, uh, you know, don't need them traveling too far. They get to stay right down there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, Marshwood will win that um, B championship over found with uh, this year. I will probably be there that day because I've got go. the eight man the week before. So, yeah. A couple of <laughs> go to the eight in Portland that day. Um, we're going to move on to Class C. Um, Pretty much uh, everybody makes the playoffs. So, so they're kind of, you know, they're playing for position um, um, all year. And, uh, and you know, kind of we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go with uh, – um, we'll start with Class C North. A lot of, uh, lot of local flavor there, uh, Bob. Um, you got, uh, you know, uh, Brewer and Herman going at it. Brewer not used to be in Class C, but here they are. And it uh, should be a good battle on uh, Friday night, huh? I think so. I know Herman lost an awful lot from last year, um, you know, struggling in their exhibition game with John Babs last week. Uh, and then Brewer went down to Salem, Massachusetts and Battle of the Witches. And they kind of had a controlled scrimmage down there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to have uh, a lot of local teams in that class. You've got uh, those two, Hamden Academy, you know, Nokomis is fairly close, close by. And then the other two teams in that division are the Midcoast teams, Oceanside and the Dominic Valley. Yeah, and um, speaking of Oceanside, Andrew, they they um, took a trip uh, for a preseason game, didn't they? They did. Oceanside, they made the uh, the haul all the way out to Manchester to take on a uh, one of the local um, private schools that made their that came up from Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, I know their school, uh, Oceanside, was really hyping up this idea that, you know, why does playing out-of-state opponents have to be just for those down south or those close to the border? My hat's off to them. I think these out-of-state games are, are great, you know, great team-building exercises, even if they're in the other uh, regular season. Yeah. Or even um, if they're in the exhibition, sorry. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, Bob mentioned the Brewer going down. It was a, it was a control scrimmage, but that they – a good competition. Uh, I guess Salem has a Division One, uh, one uh, quarterback. So um, you know, good, good. Um, you know, probably as good of a quarterback as they're going to see definitely all, all regular season. So you know, that's that's a good good way to get ready for the the season there. Um, Andrew in the South, um, you got you know Cape Elizabeth and Chevers are obviously the two names. Chevers obviously back to you know kind of playing the uh, class you know regular class C schedule out of eight man. But what do you see there? The talk has been all off season about Levitt. Um, Levitt's taking on three class A opponents, which is, I don't know how far back you would have to go. 
uh, if it even if there even even is precedent to see a class C team take on three class A opponents. Um, my hat's off to them. I think everybody everybody that I've talked to is eagerly anticipating that showdown between Thornton Academy and the Hornets. And that is going to be, it's going to be a great measuring stick and it, it's an ambitious one. And that that's great. Um, I, Chevrolet is, looks like Chevrolet is, you know, continuing their rebuild um, after all the, the strength of the program, the kids coming in, in that eight man year. Um, I feel bad for, for Cape Elizabeth. They were looking pretty thin last year and they've got a new coach to replace, um, to replace Sean when he moved up. You've got um, Peter Sakutis who's in his first year as the head coach. He's, he's certainly got a, a, a build ahead of him. They, I think the capers were looking pretty thin coming out of the regular season. So I'm sincerely hoping that he can help, you know, kind of get that build back up there, get those numbers back in. Um, you're also looking at Freiburg Academy. You know, they're going to be strong as well. York, they're also strong as well. As small as, as small as Southern Sea looks, it's, I think it's going to be just as strong of a battle like last year. And um, Bob, in the North, to me, I mean, I, I think you have a little bit more knowledge of this, but it looks totally wide open, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think Oceanside, I think you would have to be the favorite right now. Um, I know Madomic Valley's got a pretty good core back. Uh, lost to Key Lyman, uh, the real good back. Um, graduated from a year ago, but uh, I, I think Oceanside's probably the team to beat in Class uh, C North. Um, Andrew, uh, how about your picks um, in Class C, South and North? Uh, starting out of the North, I've heard some great things about what Oceanside's doing. They've got a strong dot, uh, buy-in this year. Um, Madomic Valley did great last year in making their first trip to a football state championship. But I think... Um, Oceanside kind of runs the table, and I think they make their first one since, what is it, 1979 Rockland? Does that sound about right? In a long time. Yes. Yeah, pre, uh, pre-Oceanside merger, definitely. But I see them uh, them making the, uh, the trip. And then out of the south, I see Levitt. I think Levitt's the, the consensus for everybody I've talked to. All right. Uh, Bob? Yeah, I would have to go the same as Andrew. I think Levitt over Oceanside and uh, Levitt certainly. And I like what they've done with their schedule. Thornton Academy, Oxford Hills, Lewiston, Lawrence outside the conference. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. I'm going to do that. Go the same way, Levitt over o Oceanside. But I do think maybe a team from the north that we're not thinking of could surprise and kind of, uh, you know, kind of battle. Because, I don't know, it just it seems that, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. Oceanside is probably the favorite, but. It seems kind of wide open maybe after that. And, uh, you know, somebody somebody could get in the mix that we're not expecting. But, yeah, um, seems like that's a consensus there, um, Levitt and Oceanside in uh, Class uh, class C. Um, we can move to Class D where East of Maine Sports Media will have quite a few games this year. With um, We're having all the ponies home games again this year. And, uh, you know, maybe we can throw in another game or two here along the way. But, um, you know, I guess Freeport has moved – to the south uh, I, well it's not it's two classes now actually it's, it's um you know so that's that's the difference there is it's been one class for the past uh you know few few years so you know that um what changes with that andrew um you know obviously um you know foxcroft you know they got mci now in d that's a that's a that's a difference um what do you see um in class d um and with the changes in two classes i mean two divisions Oh, I mean, you're seeing, you know, you saw a shift of four schools going down from Class C down to Class D, Belfast, um, Main, Inst or Main Central, Old Town, and Winslow. Um, in the, the West, you saw the Wells made the shift down as well. Um, I think it makes for an all the more stronger battle uh, across the boards. Um I'm very intrigued by what comes out of uh, what comes out of the north. I think that's probably the more intriguing matchups to me, and I'm hoping that some of these programs that are moving down, like a Belfast, like an Old Town, kind of 
they've been uh they've been taking their lumps in C for a while. So I'm hoping that this move down will give them a chance to regroup and they can kind of re-strengthen themselves. Yeah, I mean Winslow, one of the best programs you know in the state overall, you know in the history. So uh, Bob, you think you know them going down to D and uh, playing more of that kind of schedule will kind of get them back? Yeah, I think so. I, again, they had a key injury last year too. Once uh, once they got back, they were very. I mean, they had a very competitive game with Madomic in the in the playoffs. So you know, down by their standards, but certainly, I mean, their their program is still still pretty solid. Uh, I think. Uh, D North, I think you certainly have to look at Foxcroft Academy as a favorite. Um, uh, they've got the uh, quarterback Rayfield back and some good playmakers. Uh, Jaden Richards, um, real good back receiver. Um, you know, still pretty good line. Uh, Caruso kid at center is uh, very, very solid for them. So I, I, I still think Foxcroft Academy is the favorite in that in that division. They also got uh, Gage Beaudry transferring back from Dexter back to Foxcroft. So he, he, he'll he help them. Um, nobody can replace Gaden Crocker, but it will help kind of <laughs> um, fill that role a little bit there. Um, Andrew, um, you know, you talked about Wells a little bit. Um, you know, again, one of the be you know best programs, you know, around, along with Winslow, Foxcroft. They get, there's a lot of great programs in, in Class D. Um, what do you see in the Wells team? Um. Tim Roach has built this amazing community involvement into the Warriors program down there. Um, community loves him. Kids love him. Um, you know, he, he does what he needs to do without yelling, without hollering. You know, he, he commands everybody's respect and he easily gets it because, you know, there's a great back and back and forth there. there. Uh, and, you, you really can't count out his sort of teams. The last time he was in Class D, it was part of his uh, winning streak down there when they went to state. So immediately a lot of folks see that move down and they're thinking, oh, here, he's, here he is to kind of mop the floor of D. But I don't think, I think it's going to be a lot more challenging than years in the past. You've got, you know, Lisbon went to the state championship and they kind of came out of nowhere. I don't think a lot of people saw them as a three seed making that move down, but they beat John Bapst in the quarters. They beat um, Freeport in a pretty close game. And there's some that were thinking Freeport was finally due. And, you know, you see them, uh, Winthrop Monmouth Halldale, the, the co-op, they've got a brand new artificial turf uh field that they're working on right now finally uh, getting rid of some of that that grass field at the bottom of the hill uh, I know they're excited for that we may see from what I've been told we may see maybe a couple changes uh, they're going to be playing in Lewiston to start off the season uh, their season uh, while they're working on getting the last of the field set up the lights but I think they're excited to get that artificial turf um, Poland Poland um, looked pretty strong in their exhibition game as well. So this might be the year that they may make a little bit of noise coming, uh, coming out of the South against, you know, the traditional powers down there. Um, Bob, touch on a couple teams that you may know something about. Definitely John Babs and also um, Old Town. Um, can you touch on those um, two teams um, and maybe what, what you expect from them? John Babs probably more so than, than Old Town, but, um, John Babs was a triple option. They were super young a year ago. Uh, the quarterback, uh, Aiden Wallet, uh, does a really good job orchestrating that sophomore this year. Uh, that, that's going to be really, really difficult to prepare for. Uh, they open up with Foxcroft Academy, which is you know going to be a tall task to go up there on Friday night. But then you look at the rest of the schedule, and it, it sets up pretty, pretty well for them, I think. So I think John Babs to the north, I think maybe one of those upper echelon teams, certainly. Um, you know, in Old Town, moving down, Andrew kind of touched on that, you know, we touched on that a little bit earlier, you guys, and, uh, you know, maybe another program that maybe could benefit from playing down a, down a class, huh? Yeah, honestly, I really don't see a whole lot of difference between Class C North and Class D North. Uh, I think we looked at a lot of the crossover games last year. The C North teams really struggled against the Class D team. So, uh, in a way, I, I, I would certainly – put Foxcroft Academy, I think you put them in C North, they would be right there as well. So I, I don't really see much of a drop off between C and D. Um, Andrew, let's uh, 
let's do a pets for a class D. Um, what, what do you got for class D? Danny White keeps doing all the right things at Foxcroft Academy. That ain't going to change. I think he's going back for a third year. Uh, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this this would be his first three P state appearance? I know he's done a lot of uh, not just for himself but the school. Um, I believe this would be the school's first, or maybe uh, maybe second three P trip. Uh, Bob, would you know? Off the top of my head, no. Um, they, they might have gone three years in a row. I don't. don't... I don't. They haven't won. They haven't won three in a row. I, I, I get pretty confident about that. But as far as going three years in a row, that I am not a hundred percent sure. And it's another. It's pretty, pretty good that Danny White's three wins away from one hundred, and not a extremely long <laughs> coaching coaching career either. Really, I mean, considering, I mean, getting that many wins that soon. So that's pretty impressive too. You figure at his age, going into his 14th uh, season of coaching, I've got him at 90, 97 and 39, losing just 39 games, and that span is remarkable. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So is that who you see winning the North? I see Foxcroft Academy going back, and out of the South, it's going to be a tough one. Um, I take a look and I'm I'm feeling strong about Freeport. I think Freeport may surprise some people. I think this is the year they finally they get there. They uh they bring uh they bring at least a, a game or their you know the Falcon Mojo out to uh out to a state championship site. And just a quick plug on October 13th, East Timmy Sports Media has that preview of that state game on um on uh that Fox Rough Academy. But uh, go ahead, Bob. I'm going to go with the uh, Wells Warriors in the south, and in the north I'll go with Foxcroft Academy Ponies, and I think Foxcroft gets denied the three-peat. I'm going to go with uh, Wells in the state championship game. I'm going to go with uh, Foxcroft and Lisbon with uh, Foxcroft, uh, Foxcroft winning uh, the state game uh, this season again. So that's, uh, that's our class D picks. Uh, we're going to jump to uh, eight-man uh, large uh, division, and uh, um, First, Andrew, just maybe talk about, uh, you know, I think when eight man started, there's a lot of people put the nose up to it or whatnot. This, this has really helped the, the schools that needed that needed it. And um, maybe just talk about that for a minute. Definitely, it's helped. Um, you're seeing a lot of programs that are now on the build. Uh, I had a chance to go out to Bath for their Midnight Madness. I had a chance to talk with Jason Darling, the head coach out there, and he's told me that since they've made this move, it's been uh, received very positively throughout the school. As a matter of fact, he's got a large turnout of kids coming in at the freshman level. I kind of commented to him afterwards i said you may be careful you might get the chevrous treatment from some of the people who are going to look at your sideline thinking oh you're clearly too big but he wouldn't have that he wouldn't see it that way he would say this is doing everything that everybody has talked about for the programs that have been on their build you know he he's happy that he's going to have a jv team for the first time in a long long time that's going to help out i know mount desert island um they talked for the longest time about that as well, well, that you can't just measure eight man in terms of, especially amongst the larger schools in terms of, yeah, it's keeping these programs afloat. You need to also look at the fact that they're giving these programs a chance to start giving the JVs their own games. So they're not just sitting on the bench for, you know, their eighth grade year, ninth grade year, and then suddenly being thrust in against seniors of which they're not physically prepared for. Yeah, and um, you know, kind of another school that you know maybe can get back on track because of the eight man um, football is is Brunswick. Um, you know, kind of just talk about them and maybe how this could help them. I feel bad for Brunswick. Um, without getting into all the details, there was the hazing incident. It did cost a a, a coach his job out there. One who was he was well respected in the community. Last year was tough on the program um they're usually a pretty strong community orientated group and i think you saw it taking a toll so they've got a new coach out there they've got mark reyna who's had um he's done some time with um gray new gloucester so he is a bit familiar with 
you know, preparing teams, building them up. He's certainly going to have a task ahead of him. Um, it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be interesting this year to see if the community will accept eight man. Um, they're a pretty strongly belief in 11 in the traditional game. So I think that how the community handles this season is going to be a good figure going forward for how well, how quickly they can build and, you know, get back to 11 man. Cause I'm sure that's their goal. Yeah. And um, you know, it's better than what the other option is right, right now in, in not, not playing. So, I mean, I think, uh, you know, they hopefully will accept it and um, you know, that program will be kind of built back where it was, once was and um, they can get by that that incident and, um, you know, kind of get past that and, um, you know, hopefully build it back up. Um, Bob, what do you see, um, you know, some the lo local teams to, you know, kind of central Maine would be in the class and the eight man lodge would be uh, Camden Hills and, and Waterville. You see much uh, eight man football, Bob? I really don't. I mean, between John Baps and Bangor and doing a lot of PA there, I don't, uh, I did see the eight man state games last year, which, you know, it was exciting football. I, I really have enjoyed the eight man game. I, I mostly see 11, but a uh, question for Andrew though, uh, we're talking about Brunswick. Uh, any word on what their numbers are like? They were very young coming out of last year. Um, it's going to be all about how much they wanted to, how, how well they're, they can get the kids to return. It's all going to be about that. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot about them and I don't know if that's maybe by design or they're just trying to keep a low profile. Um, it'll all be, you know, it'll all be depending on how that opening season match comes up. And I believe as I'm looking over my schedule, they are heading out to play uh gray new Gloucester. So it's, it's going to be a, uh, We'll, we'll have to see. That's that's the best way. I don't know where exactly they're at. I think for many people, it's it's trying to figure out, you know, do they have a place? Do they know what the place is and what is going to be their goal? Is, you know, is it respectability? Are they do they have gold ball dreams like the community traditionally has? That's going to be uh, that'll be the decide. That'll be kind of what we'll have to see for this year for them. All right. Well, Andrew, we'll start with you um, on. The predictions for eight man large school uh divisions and uh kind of where do you see that what's your predictions for that i like the north i think unlike last year i didn't think the north was too overly competitive but this year you've got spruce mountain shifting over they do have a graduation they they had a heck of a running back in reese davis um he i believe yeah reese davis um he graduated he was a strong running back for them. You had Robert Lavalier coming out of Mountain Valley, which, you know, that's going to be, you know, they were a strong team in, uh, in the small school ranks. They went undefeated. They lost to the eventual state championship, but you know that those folks up in Rumford, that's going to, you know, eat at them all off season that they were that close to going back. It's been a long time. Interestingly enough, those two schools, you wouldn't picture them being in the North. It's all part of that shift to try to help level out the regions. But I think overall coming out of the North, Isaac LeBlanc did a great, you know, he, he's got a great community buy-in for the eight-man football. You know, they, they've they supported it. You would think the numbers would be a bit stronger, but you know what? You look at what happened with Van Osen last year as their quarterback. Um, I'm thinking, though, I'm thinking this may be the year for Morse. Morse may finally make that move. I think I think this will be their year. And out of the South, the South, it's, you know, I guess I've kind of viewing Frank True as the godfather of a large school eight man right now. Ever since he's kind of appeared on the scene, those Eagles there in Topsom have been contenders each and every year. And while Yarmouth, plays a tough ground game. I think losing that uh, that big guy, number uh, 93, Lebrec, uh, to graduation, that's going to kind of hurt them a little bit. They had a unique uh, build, but I think this is that year that Mount Ararat goes back to state, and I'm liking out of that battle. I mean, and plus, that gives you a unique little mid-coast uh, matchup right there, Mount Ararat and uh, Morse. 
separated by what 10 miles if that i mean all the way yeah. up to bank <laughs> well <laughs> yeah exactly close battle right. but they're gonna have to travel up the uh up to 95 to 95 and up to bangor for that one but yeah. out of there uh my money my money i'm gonna lay it all be on mount Ararat. all right um i'll go next on that one i'll go i'll go yamath and a surprise team i guess is i'm gonna go with mbi with yamath yamath winning that and uh eight man large uh, division bob what do you say about that yeah, I, I think there's a lot of parity. And I mean, is, again, Andrew Harp's the uh, eight man guru. I'm, I'm not quite as much, but um, I certainly think, you know, Mount Ararat in the South and it's traditional programming. And I'm going to kind of go with traditional programs here. Uh, the North, I think, is a little bit tougher. You got, you know, Morse, Waterville, MDI, I think all got to battle. But again, I'll go, I like uh, Andrew's pick with Morse too. And I'll go Mount Ararat over uh, Morse in the uh, state final. The last um, division we'll go over is eight man smaller school um, regions. Um, and I think on paper, probably uh, everybody expects Orono and Old Archer to be playing, um, you know, kind of, but obviously a lot of things can happen. Um, kind of a odd that Mount View is in the South, but again, that's to balance out the, that's to balance out the uh, um, divisions and, uh, um, you know, they're in there, they're, uh, and Miranda Cook's in there too, but Mount View is definitely the farthest north, north, north team in that division. Um, but you had to even it out with Bucksport, Dexter, Ellsworth, Holton, Baton Rouge, Cook, Orono, Stearns, and um, the team from up north on um, Valley um, in there. So um, <laughs> Mount View was, uh, was the odd man out there. But um, Andrew. Well, at least they don't have to travel to Rooster County. So that's. So actually, yeah. actually playing in the south, their travel actually might be a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, it might be. That's true. All right. Um, and we'll have their open and, uh, opener on Saturday afternoon. Again, um, again um, Chris and Zach will be on the call of uh, Sockby at Mount View. But, um, Andrew, do you see Old Orchard as the, as the favorite again in the, in the South? I do, as a matter of fact. Uh, graduations, more than anywhere else, I think, has really leveled out the, the parity in the small school ranks in eight man. Um, you look at some of the top kids that were there, both in Bucksport, Dexter, Matt Cook, um, Stearns, even to an extent in Mountain View with that Ev Evanson. Um, I look at the same thing in, uh, I look at Deerigo. I also look at Telstar as well. Um, I'm happy to be able to announce them as being a, finally a competing team after the rough times they've had for the longest time. Um, but overall, what Orono is bringing back, they've got a great young core. And when I've talked to, to Coach uh, Sinclair over there, that's the one thing he said. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I believe we were even kind of talking about it in the off season. He did some, you know, proof that you can teach an old dog new tricks. You know, traditionally, Orono has been a run team. And look what they did last year. They were probably one of the most exciting offenses, uh, air attacks that you're going to see out of the eight-man ranks. And they were very good at it. Usually you don't see that out of eight, man. It's either you're a strong run-based team just because fewer people, you know, you you have less at your second level. You, you, you oftentimes don't have a third level, so you don't have to contend with safeties. A couple missed blocks, a um, couple missed tackles, and it separates either you getting drilled in the backfield or you breaking it clear. And that's something that everybody saw out of uh, the folks there at Orange uh, up in Orono. Yeah. Um, so, really, w with the loss of all the seniors and the teams you mentioned, um, you know, I know Dexter lost a lot, and um, you know the other team, Madden Alcook, lost one of the best players, um, you know, in the in the league. Um, who do you think could be the biggest challenge to Orono in the North? Holton's done a good job over the years of building up a strength. Um, they're going to be a bit, um, another kind of a coaching change. They've got David Day, who's taking over up there, um, you know, kind of filling in, picking up the coaching spot. Um, Bucksport, another one. They've got another new coach. Uh, lot, you know, maybe lost in the shuffle throughout the state, but certainly not amongst his peers. Joel Sankey uh, hung up his, uh, his whistle. 
And now they've got a new guy. Uh, Sean Geegan's been around their program for a while, so he's familiar with it. He's familiar with the kids. He's familiar with his uh, his coach, you know, the coaches under him. And this will be a great time for him to kind of, you know, show the community that, you know, this is the, the bill. They need to move. They're going to be moving on. But I think that they're going to have just as much success under him as they did with Joel. Um, you know, Bob, you know, a lot of local teams involved, you know, in the, in the north, um, you know, definitely, um, you know, schools like Bucksport, Dexter, Manonarco, and obviously Orono, you know, Ben, ben Powell was in other classes for years, but now they're going at it in, in eight man uh, football. What did you see? You said you saw the state games last year. What did you see that impressed you in, in Orono? Well, obviously their athleticism at the skill positions, uh, Walston kid, you know, so, you know, and they, you know, they won a state championship in basketball last year too. And I think, you know, success from sports, you know, can carry over to other sports as well. So they did get that gold ball in basketball last year. And all of those same participants, uh, you got the two Francis kids, uh, that are super athletic and then, uh, uh, Brewer kid at quarterback. So they're, um, they, they're probably as athletic and skill positions as anybody. Uh, and I also think Bucksport's going to be a contender too, as Andrew mentioned. Uh, they, you know, their salt program solid. And again, I think it'll be a fairly seamless transition with Coach Gagan going into uh, to Bucksport. So uh, Orno's certainly not going to have a cakewalk getting through the North. I think they do come through, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Bucksport uh, challenges and possibly wins it either. Um, all right, Bob, we'll go right on to your predictions and uh, in South and North and the uh, eight man small. Right, eight man small. I'm going to go with the uh, rematch of last year's state championship game, Old Orchard Beach. Uh, that'll be Dean Plant's uh, third state championship in two years. He won the uh, girls basketball state championship at Old Orchard Beach. And uh, I think we'll do it again in football this year. Yeah. Third, third state championship in, in about 12 months. Huh? Yeah. Um, a Andrew, what about you? I echo the same thing Bob did. Um, you're going to see a Bob Sinclair team going to an Orono team going to back-to-back -back state championships for the first time in, what, the 90s? Does that sound about right, since the 90s? So you've got that. Um, I'm going to kind of – I'll keep uh, Dean Plant's um, prowess in a football context. He'll go back to a third state championship in four seasons with Old Orchard Beach. Um, but the one thing – as much as I like what Orno's got for their offense, and it's nothing against the, the the kids down there, they certainly put on a show last year. But come playoff time, Old Orchard Beach cranked down on their defense and down the uh, down the down the run in the the playoff stretch where it counts. No team was better defensively than the Gulls. And when they get up to Bangor, I think it's uh, Gulls fly high over uh, the Red Riots again. Yeah. I'm going to go with the same matchup and the same result. I will watch it, uh, you know, getting by in a, in a, in a great game um, in uh, November as uh, Bob will be on the PA for that. And uh, it should be a, should be a great, great day, uh, day of football. Um, so that was great. We did um, each class. We're going to, um, let's go on to maybe Andrew first. What are you maybe looking forward to the most this upcoming football season? This is year two of the creative scheduling. Like, and I, I, I use the term creative scheduling because it's not the same old, same old round robin that we've seen in years past. And I think it's given some excitement to programs to kind of test the waters of where they're at. You know, everybody's going to point out about what Levitt's doing. But I'm not also going to, you know, I'll also look at other programs that are going to be doing kind of the same thing. Now, eight man does not play out of class games. Um, the smaller school ranks don't play those out of region. So it's really kind of left up to class A through class D. Um, but I like the idea that so many programs are willing to kind of check out more than just their region. And I think it's, it's, it's long overdue, in my opinion. Um, to kind of be able to do that. And with smaller regions, in order to, to continue keeping four classes, to be able, you know, expanding the schedules, giving them the flexibility to schedule elsewhere, whether it's against another region or up or down a class, was a necessity. 
but I think a lot of coaches are taking this to heart and really kind of exploring these, if not dream matches that all the fans have been talking about for years, maybe some things that kind of, you know, give them a chance to say, you know what, we can, we can hang with these people. We're going to show that we can hang with these people. Yeah. And you talked about um, Levitt playing what two or three class A teams, something like that. Um, yeah. You don't see that, Bob. Have you seen that in any sport playing up two classes like that? Basketball, baseball, softball, anything? I, I don't remember that. No, not at all. Um, I mean, occasionally you might have one matchup, but not not three, certainly. So that's uh, definitely a very uh, different situation, Sue. And, you know, I, and I, I, what Andrew said, I think it's really, really good for high school football in the state. Yeah. I kind of wish they could do that some in basketball, huh? Yeah, uh, you know, so although basketball, you generally don't have the disparity, and, and, and it's hard to do from one year to the other. And and plus, you also have girls and boys to contend with too, which makes scheduling a little bit more difficult that way too. Um, Bob, what are you looking forward to most this uh, upcoming uh, football season? I'm looking forward to the two teams that I'll see this year: uh, the Bengal Rams and the John Baptist Crusaders. I think both are going to have interesting years and be more, much improved from last year. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, some of the cross-class games, too. Hopefully I get a chance to see Thornton Academy and uh, Levitt play. like to like to see that. Uh, so that's really what I'm looking forward to this year, and, you know, just seeing some of the, some of the real good teams uh, compete this year. Yeah, uh, Andrew, maybe if, if there's one or two games you can pick out, I mean, it might be hard to think of right now, but it's at some point in the season, maybe. what are you, I mean, I know – the Levitt games against class 18 kind of intrigued me, um, you know, but what maybe some games, if th those are other, other games that you may be kind of looking at as uh, things to watch down the road. Um, I am liking a matchup of Massabesic and Marshwood. I'm kind of, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of quickly trying to peruse the, uh, the schedules here. Um, I believe they are on the docket. I'm trying my apologies if I'm kind of stalling for time. I'm trying to bring up the thing on my uh, my site here. Um, they've got a matchup in week five, and I think that'll be perfect for for Massabesic. You know, they they went six and two. It's been, I believe, you have to go back to oh five or oh six. My memory is kind of leading me there. The last time that uh, a Mustangs team was truly that strong. I'm thinking, you know, for them to, you know, for Coach Lab to continue the the buildup of those kids down in Waterboro, they've got to be able to kind of start knocking on the door of some of these more established teams. It's going to be a perfect opportunity for them. Um, I always like these matchups that Lawrence is in. If there's any team traditionally that looks strong, it's always Lawrence year in and year out. And with... Higgins graduating, they're going to, I think it's going to be, we'll see what they can produce. You know, Hersom's always got a great running team. It's pr the running game is always the key in, for those Bulldogs. I'm curious how they're going to handle against, um, against Levitt. I'm also curious what they're going to do, uh, not just against Bangor, but they've got Falmouth in week two. And this will be a chance for them to kind of, uh, to show, you know, where does an early and traditional power lie amongst those two. Bob, oh, is there a game or two maybe that you could point to, uh, you know, during the season that you kind of got your eye on that you maybe don't want to miss? Oops. Did we lose them? Oh, me. Okay. I thought you were talking to, I thought you were asking Andrew. Okay. Hey, let's get a little, long day, get a little late here. Um, I think obviously, you know, Lawrence Bangor Friday, you know, opening night again, Lawrence lost, you know, graduated the Higgins kid last year. And then, um, you know, Bangor with that really young team a year ago, now a year older, a little stronger. So I'm really looking forward to that Friday night. And then uh, I haven't checked to see what my schedule is uh, elsewhere, but uh, Levitt and uh, Thornton Academy. Uh, and I think, you know, eight man state championship day too. Possible, you know, Old Orchard Beach or Arnold rematch. Um, possibly, man, we could be looking forward to. Excellent. Um, we're going to finish things up here with um, 
Um, and I'm going to say I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to um, you know because I'll be at Foxcroft for all the home games. The the free for Foxcroft game on on the final home game for Foxcroft on October 13th. That that should be very good. I'm interested. I know Herman struggled in the in the preseason a little bit, but Herman actually comes to Foxcroft too. So looking forward to seeing them and that program come to Foxcroft. Um, we're going to finish up here. Kind of final thoughts, both of you. I know um, Bob, you want to talk about the kind of the the classifications and, and all that. And um, we'll give, we'll give uh, Andrew a chance after that to um, give final thoughts, but first to you, Bob. Yeah. I, again, first of all, I think the football committee overall is to be commended for the hard work they've done with the schedule. It's some really good matchups. Uh, one of the things I would like to see too, a couple of things. Number one, I think there needs to be some criteria as far as allowing teams to play down a class. Uh, originally, when teams were allowed to play down a class, the purpose was to kind of help their program build, be competitive. It wasn't so much about winning as it was about being competitive. There's a big difference between not being competitive and not winning. Uh, some of the programs playing down, to be honest with you, um, I would I would question why they're why they're playing down. Um, and and I, again, if you're going out getting beat by 50 points every single week. Again, that doesn't, and again, I can understand that point, but um, I, I do think there needs to be some strict criteria as far as playing down a class. And the other thing too, is I would like to see us go from four classes of 11 man to three. Um, we've got 78 schools playing football. 24 of those are going to be playing in a regional championship game. So basically just over about 30% of the schools in the state of Maine are going to be playing in a regional championship game. To me, that seems a little bit excessive to me. I still think you can do a lot with the creative scheduling and actually having more schools in a class is as good as the regular season is going to be. If you're a top team, you don't have to go through many, many good teams to get to a championship. So I, I really would like to see us go back to three classes of all of them in uh, football. And I also would like to see some real, you know, scrutiny placed upon schools that elect to play down a class. Yeah. Anybody, uh, final thoughts from you, Andrew, on uh, what, we got, what we're got, what we going to see here soon? I like everything that Bob said, spot on, as usual. Um, I agree with it all. No, there's two things that I want to see is I love the expansion of the out of state games in the regular season. We're seeing two new games. Uh, Bangor is going to be going to Winniconnet in uh, Hampton. Hopefully, I pronounced that school right. I went and doubt from Bangor. Yeah, I'll have that game week five at a high noon game on a Saturday week five up at Cameron Stadium. Gotta love that travel for a school from New Hampshire coming up on a Saturday afternoon or Saturday early morning. Yeah, apparently they're staying overnight in Bangor, and then they're, uh, I guess they're going to practice the field the night before, have a little walk through, and then uh, they're staying over, and then they're going to play uh, Saturday at noon. And for games like that, I think that's great. Um, yeah, there's a cost. Yeah, there's a distance. Yeah, you've got local schools that could play just as well. But we're trying to give, you know, we're giving the kids a chance to do something that hopefully is memorable. You know, it's not just another game, another schedule. There's bragging rights. There's reputation of the state of great state of Maine to defend it, to keep them going. And hopefully this expands outside of Class A. Um, I had a chance to speak with David Utterbach um, last year about this. He says that he would, you know, one of his goals was eventually he'd like to see maybe they go a little bit further west. Maybe Vermont gets tapped in. Who knows? Maybe we see Massachusetts coming up. Or we some, you know, we have a chance to showcase the best in Maine against maybe one of the top powers in um, in the Massachusetts or the MIAA coming up. So that's one thing that I like. Um, Another thing that I, I've, I've, you know, I've trumpeted the great aspects of eight man for a long time. I believe in it. I support it wholeheartedly. I love what it's done to, for a lot of schools in Maine that, you know, that otherwise weren't going to be able to have a team to be able to play safely, if not, you know, let alone competitively. Now I think we're at the point where, we do need to start preparing ourselves for a reality of at what point do these eight man schools that are on the rebound 
get kind of, you know, get that chance, you know, if not being asked outright being told, Hey, I think it's time that you move, make that move back up. Um, I think that'll be the next battle for the football committee is to try to figure out, is there a balance that can be maintained? Because like playing down, it's one thing to kind of help that program build, but at what point does building for eight man kind of start kind of encroaching upon that 11? And that's a tough, that's a tough um, balancing act. I, you know, for all the pro, for all the coaches out there that love the fact that they have a uh, a JV team for the first time in a long time, where it, do we you know are we going to have to start creating a line that says okay I think it's time to move up I don't have all the answers I don't think anybody has the answers but the conversation does need to start, start up a little bit. I agree, and I think you know football committee does a tremendous job. One thing though that. You know, there's a two-letter word that people need to be from, start being familiar with, and that's no. You know, I think sometimes um, try to make everybody happy, and you know, if somebody comes, well, we really think we ought to play down, we ought to play eight man, I'll, I'll go ahead. And you know, I think sometimes the word no needs to be uttered a little bit more in some of these conversations. Yeah, well, you guys have been great. Any any final thoughts before we sign off for the night, guys? I'm just looking forward to Friday night and kicks off. Actually, there's a few games this uh, coming Thursday, I believe. Um, it's an Ocean, uh, Old Orchard Beach opens uh, Thursday night, I believe, the only game of the state this Thursday. Yep. Dean Plant will be doing his Thursday night kickoff down at uh, Joe Regina Football Field in Old Orchard Beach when they, uh, they host Trape Academy. And I can't wait. It's, you know, that's what I'm waiting for more than anything. Finally, let's get this season underway. There you go. The the uh, only really good thing about summer being over, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's the best weather of the year up here, late August, September, and October. Best we best weather in the state of Maine. That's right. That's right. But, well, I want to thank you guys, and and maybe we can do this mid season, something like that, and kind of you know see where we're at. Maybe at at the end of the season, if you guys are available, we can kind of get you on again uh, a couple times throughout throughout the year. Absolutely, love to do it maybe mid season after week four, week five, and kind of get a little barometer after we maybe know a few things. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, again, everybody, check out Andrew's site. It's the place to go. Uh, you know, we 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 post scores and everything, but they've got they've got all the information. And uh, you know, that's the that was football wise. That's the number one uh, place to go. And uh, appreciate your hard work, Andrew. Thank you very much. Once again, www.mainhighschoolfootball.com and visit our Facebook page, uh, Facebook and do the search Maine High School Football. Thank you, Andrew. And again, uh, Eastern Maine Sports Media has uh, two games this weekend. Uh, John Baps at Foxcroft Academy Friday night and uh, Sockery Valley at Mount View on Saturday afternoon, uh, 6.45 Friday night and 12.45 on Saturday. So thank you, everybody. And we'll definitely be seeing all you guys around. Thank you. Thanks. Sounds good. We'll see you down the line here. Have a good night, everybody.